Hello, folks, and welcome to another edition of Super Grand Audio of Super Grand Champ Match Coverage. My name is Steve Anderson. I will be your host once again. We're going to see all kinds of things. We're going to see actual evidence of Russian collusion. We're going to see swingers and activators causing heartbreak. We're going to see a small man pushed around by a 9 millimeter. But first, we're going to see Travis Beal. Now, you'll notice he's taken a long time to load and make ready. And you'll also notice that bad shooters often make fun of good shooters for taking a long time to prepare. Yes, that's true. They're preparing for a reason, and they're preparing to do something exceptionally well. That's why you got to prepare. Here comes Travis. Here we go. His movement's real good, except when he reloads and everything comes to a standstill. See? Nice fast forward. He misses the steal, decides to come back for it. Stands still to do his reload before he gets moving. No issues through here. He gets real lucky on that swinger. Gets the half guy backing out. And nothing much to see here on the end. Just a very, very good master class shooter doing very, very good work. Let's watch him one more time. Once again, guys, cut cut these shooters some slack on the make ready. They they invest a lot in this. They they deserve a little time to make ready. ready? Don't give them a hard time. Bye. Once again, current limit of human function coming through there. Current limit of human function, except missing the steal. <laughs> Standing still for a reload. Good job shooting on the way in. Good transition. Swing is right where he wants it. Another little bit of a low reload. And he's off around the corner. If you listen to the speed of his shooting, he's shooting quicker at the end than some of these other guys are. Let's watch him a little bit in slow motion. See, he's ready to move. He's getting in there real aggressive. Doing good work there. He comes in a little hot and has trouble on the steel. Yep, he missed it. Missed it again. Decides to leave it and come back for it. Finally aims and connects. Standing still for a reload. Off he goes. Very good shooting on the way in. That's excellent. Transitions through there pretty good. And the swinger's just about where he wants it. Yep. Come off that little half guy. Another sort of a low reload. Let's watch him again in slow motion. Anytime he's not shooting, he's going as fast as his body can go. And he's obviously trained himself to do that without thinking about it. Gun comes in pretty high. He shoots a little too soon while the gun's still moving and misses that steal. All right, here's him versus Dennis. Dennis hangs back a little bit, but because he doesn't have any trouble with the steal, he catches up real nice. Now, Dennis endures some major heartbreak here on this swinger. And here's Dennis having trouble. Where's Swinger? Where's Swinger? I don't like, I don't like. And that caused him to miss his position, letting Travis pull ahead. No problems at all. All right, around the corner. Also, Travis is shooting those back targets quicker than anybody else. He's obviously seeing what he needs to see and not trying to over-aim. Now we're going to see Dennis by himself doing everything right except wearing belt loops and hitting swingers. Here he goes. He hangs back a little bit, and that helps him a little bit. He has less distance to go to with that second position. Gets that steal like a champ. Comes in here shooting. Very, very good. He got a little bit lost on that hardcover target. Oh, and that swinger's just eating his lunch. He's all out of sorts here. That's most of the two seconds that Travis got him by. And I think a little bit uh, also on the end targets there with splits and transitions. Travis just tore those up at the end. Here's Dennis by himself. A nice aerial view here so you can see what these guys are shooting at. I'd like to see him more aggressive going to that second position. Good shooting on the way in. You'll notice his head's always ahead of the gun. Ooh, mm, that swinger just took him to town. See how he's out of position there. Dennis is actually, he, he's a really good shooter. He's working his butt off. I hate to see that swinger break his heart like that. Here we go again in slow motion. That looks very good. Dennis is obviously calling his shots because you won't catch him checking his work. As soon as he fires his shot, he's on to the next one. Gets the steal like a champ. See how he's moving while he's reloading. Does good shooting on the way in here. All that looks wonderful. See how his head's ahead of the gun. That's good. 
The swinger's just not where he wants it. He doesn't like his shots. He's worried about it. And he's moving backwards now because he doesn't want to be stand still, but it's causing him some trouble there. He's not where he wants to be. That actually cost him more time than the swinger did. That's unfortunate. Oh, when you when you make a blooper, you get to watch it over and over again here on Super Grand Champ. <laughs> you don't want to make a mistake for the Super Grand camera. Where's my swinger? Oh, no, that wasn't good enough. Stab it again, Dennis. Hit it one more time. And see, because he was backing up, he's not where he wants to be. Nope. The gun was all the way down there, too. Had to come way back up. And you can see how Travis just eats his lunch and makes him pay for it. See, coming through here, they're still pretty neck and neck. Dennis made up some time after Travis missed that steal, but it all goes to hell right here. Sorry about that, Dennis. I'd, I'd like to say belt loops would have helped that. I don't know if they would have or not. Hard to say. <laughs> All right, here comes Mr. Perry, our favorite t-shirt salesman. And he's doing a real good job visualizing the first part of this. And I think he visualizes the whole stage. We just can't see it. Now, he's going to do something a little different here. He's going to shoot one of the end targets from his first position. And it's going to cause him, in my opinion, to be stuck at the beginning of the stage for way too long. We need to get to the end of that thing quicker than we, uh, we sometimes do. He's warning Travis to get his short shorts out of the way. All right, here he comes. Easy shooting here. Now he has to set up like a statue to get that back one. I'm not sure if I agree with that. Gets the steal, no problem. Now he could be more aggressive here, but he's trying to watch that swinger. Still didn't like it. Not a great reload. He wasn't right where he wanted to be. All this through here looks okay. Another not wonderful reload that he got back up on target pretty good. And he's shooting pretty quickly there at the end. The camera makes it a little difficult to see what they're shooting at, but when you get to the aerial view, you'll see a little bit better. So he takes the dentist line straight back. Doesn't have to go quite far in, but he does spend a lot of time here stuck. I'd like to see that gun get to the target sooner, bud. He also shoots that half cover guy from that second position. Saves him a little bit of time. That reload didn't save him any time, though. Back up on target pretty good there and around the corner. Nobody takes that as quickly as Travis did. Travis did a real good job back there. Here's Mr. Perry in slow motion. Those targets are pretty easy, but he wants to pick off something here in the back. And I think he gets stuck there for too long. He was about two seconds off the pace of Travis and uh, right there, he and Dennis were, were pretty much neck and neck. They both had some trouble. And right here, he could have been moving a lot more aggressively, but he's trying to watch that swinger from behind the gun. In my opinion, he's got to go that far anyway, so you might as well get there. It didn't really help him out too much. Kind of a flat-footed reload because he wasn't where he thought he was going to be. Here we go again. Those two are fairly close. Set up hard for the one in the back. And watch, watch his gun drop. He pulls that arm way back, slows him down a little bit. I know you guys are hearing, uh, sick of hearing about me complaining about your reloads. If you fix them, I wouldn't complain about them. See, he shot that half cover guy from the back, so he's already got it out of the way. Here he is compared to Dennis. Now watch, Dennis is gone. Once again, Dennis is gone. See, Dennis could have just... Mm, the swinger business really hurt Dennis. He could have been so much further ahead. Once again, being out of position hurt him more than the actual swinger problem did. See, he's around the corner prior to Nate. Nate must have got him just a little bit on splits and transition. There wasn't a whole lot separating those two. All right, now we're gonna watch Dave Morton. Now, Dave Morton is a B-class carry optic shooter, and I think he's shooting this stage in bullseye mode. He's shooting very, very slowly for having a dot. He also doesn't have a, a wonderful stance. He gets pushed around quite a bit. Now he's gonna start on that back target and then take the two close ones. Now watch him, he's already off balance and the gun's pushing him more. He's actually leaning backward the entire time. 
you got to get him in more of a weight forward bias. That swing is right where he wants it, so he's having no trouble there. But see, he's just shooting very, very slowly for having a dot. Now, shooting that back target from the beginning does allow him to skip a position, but he's shooting so slowly, I don't think he can really benefit from it all that much. I think this next view is going to be an aerial view, so you can kind of see what he's shooting at. Once again, I don't see any visualization here. I just see a guy loading a gun. That's another problem with some of these underclassmen. He should be visualizing right now. All right, there he goes for the hard target. You can see what he's shooting at. Swings over for the two close ones. A little bit ginger coming across there. Would like to see that be more aggressive. He does kind of luck out on the swinger. He had does no trouble with that swinger. His transitions aren't wonderful. You'll notice he's staying with the gun most of the time. We like to see the head in front of the gun instead of the, the head following the gun. That's another pretty common thing with newer dot shooters. Uh, once you call a good shot, you gotta find that next target. Here he goes again in slow motion. Setting up for that hard target. He's already back, getting, getting pushed back further. Look at that, it looks like he's falling backwards the entire time. With a vicious recoil of that nasty nine millimeter. Once again, leaning backwards. Oh, oh. He needs to get a little bit more of aggressive stance there. Overall, his technique's pretty good, I think. I think he's got a bright future. He just needs to learn to shoot that dot more like a paintbrush instead of a scalpel. But you'll notice, outside of just being generally slow and careful, I think he's doing a lot of things right. He doesn't really make any major errors. He just needs to train himself to be a lot more aggressive when moving and when shooting. See, once again, he looks like he's falling backwards. Then. Oh my goodness, oh, I'm falling backwards, falling backwards. Not the world's best transition either. See how he compares to Perry. You watch Perry's movement is just generally much more aggressive. Also, his center of gravity is a little bit more forward. He's got more of a weight forward bias. He's having no trouble. I see Morton actually pulls ahead here a little bit because Nate wasn't very aggressive getting up there. But Nate's going to pull ahead here real easy, primarily because of transitions. See, right there at the end is where Nate gets him. And there it is, actual video evidence of Russian collusion brought to you by Super Grand Champ. My name is Steve Anderson. It's been my pleasure to be your host. Let's do it again real soon. Thanks a lot, guys.